For those of you that are really struggling with uh, believing that a man could be in the belly of a whale for three days and three nights, in my research I found there are numerous stories of people that have gone overboard, been swallowed by a whale, and spent from anywhere from a few minutes to two hours, even days in the belly of a whale and survived. In our documents, we give you a lot of those stories so that you can read them for yourself and do your own research. But those stories do not prove that Jonah did this, that Jonah actually was in the belly of the whale. Part of the story is that it's a miracle. God did a miracle through Jonah to put him in the belly of the whale to teach him some lessons and to show us how we ought to live. James uh, Bartlett story is told of how he fell overboard and was swallowed by a whale unbeknownst to his friends. Uh, they thought he just died. The whale's tail probably hit him and he drowned and went to the, the bottom of the sea. Uh, they finally harpooned the whale and brought it to the ship and as they were cutting it up, it took them several days to cut it up. When they got to the stomach, they were shocked to see that the stomach was moving. There was something inside. And when the surgeon came in and split open the stomach, stomach, he was shocked to see that there was a man inside curled up in a fetal position, a man that had the gastric juices of the whale working on him for several days. They pulled him out, doused him with seawater, thinking that he probably would not survive, but James Bartlett did survive, and he survived to tell the story of what it was like to be swallowed by a whale and what it was like to be in that situation. I'm not going to take the time to to tell you the entire story, you can read about it yourself and you can look at those things. But I tell you the story is not to prove that Jonah could have been in the belly of the whale, but it might help some of you who are struggling with the reality of that. It is possible. Is it a whale? Probably not, but it's a big fish and God said he prepared that large fish to do this particular event. There are other proofs that Jonah was a real story. Uh, in recent years, from 2014 to 2017, in uh, Mosul, which is where Nineveh was, there were mounds. They knew that they were mounds of destroyed cities or, or some kind of village that was there. They began to excavate. They began to look into this archaeologically and found that it was the city of Nineveh. In fact, there are documents left behind on tablets of clay that explain about the city. And we're going to get into that and, and show how large Nineveh was and show some of the proofs there. One of the historians who was Babylonian writing in the 4th century BC, that's a long time ago. He was not a Christian, had nothing to do with the gospel or the, the Jews, but he was writing the history of Babylon and the history of the Assyrian people. And he writes concerning the city of Nineveh. The city of Nineveh had a god called Dagon. Uh, it's pronounced Dagon or Dagon, uh, but it's spelled in different ways because they're translating it. And that god was represented by a fish man. In fact, the gates of the city had two statues of a fish man, part man, part fish. That was their God. They believed that their God sent messengers from the sea to inform them. Now, wouldn't it be an amazing thing if your city is worshiping a God who is called the fish God and out crawls a man from a belly of a whale all covered with seaweed. His flesh is probably rotted, uh, at least like boils, and his skin is bleached white. And he comes into your city and starts to tell you that God had sent him to warn them of judgment to come. That's an incredible story. They are now uncovering documents that prove that Nineveh did exist and the extensiveness of that city. They also uncovered documents that, that uh, use the name Jonah. It is in their own language, but it's a, uh, a clear definition of the name Jonah that was there in that city. I find it fascinating those that need a scientific evidence have plenty of evidence that God did these things and yet they refuse to believe the evidence. 
God created the world. The evidence is there. We put the evidence on one side and the, the scientists or the agnostics or atheists will look at the same evidence and say, well, there is no God. It all came about naturally. Put the same evidence on the other side and a Christian looks at it and says, this is what God said. It's exactly how he said he created the world. We can go through each one of the miracles and find the same thing is true. Where there is no faith, no amount of arguing is going to make you believe the truth of the gospel. But I share these things that you might investigate. Make sure of these things. Study to show yourself approved unto God, to be able to reason with other people concerning the miracles God provides.